Bună ziua. I'm Sana Liu. Um, it's my pleasure to be presenting with you today. And I want to thank the conference organizers for this opportunity uh, to speak about directions in veterinary social work. So what is veterinary social work? Uh, veterinary social work has been defined as an area of social work practice that supports and strengthens interdisciplinary partnerships that attend to the intersection of humans and animals. It's the discipline is comprised of four domains, animal assisted interventions, animal related grief and bereavement, compassion fatigue and management, and the link between animal and human maltreatment. And I'll be speaking about um, each of these in, in a bit. Veterinary social work draws on the One Health paradigm. This is a worldwide strategy that expands our interdisciplinary collaboration uh, communications in all aspects of healthcare for animals, humans, and the environment. Mm -hmm. So what it does is to really recognize the interconnectedness between animals, humans, and the larger environment so that we can more effectively solve problems related to our well-being. Veterinary social workers work in veterinary hospitals, schools of social work, um, veterinary training programs, including for veterinarians and veterinary technicians, in hospitals that focus on human care, in veterinary practices, including clinics and animal hospitals, in private practices and in nonprofit organizations or NGOs. So what do veterinary social workers do? Um, they provide support to grieving animal owners. Um, so for instance, an, a, an animal owner um, may be anticipating the death of a pet um, that to whom they've become very attached. Um, and need emotional support with that process. They may work with animals and human clients in psychotherapy practices. So in, as an example, individuals who are seeing a therapist um, may find that working together with a therapist and an, and an animal helps them to become more aware of their own emotions, their own behavior, how their emotions and their behavior affect those around them. And it may also help to reduce their anxiety in speaking with their therapist. Veterinary social workers provide support services to veterinarians, veterinary technicians, and shelter workers. Um, many of these professionals experience compassion fatigue and burnout. There's a very high suicide rate among veterinarians. And so proactively providing support services can help to mitigate some of that. They teach in social work and veterinary programs. They provide services in prisons. So for instance, a number of jurisdictions have established uh, programs that pair prisoners with training dogs. And they have found that um, this pairing and the involvement of the human together with the animal helps to um, mediate some of the behavioral issues. They may serve as experts witnesses in court cases. This is particularly true in cases involving animal abuse or in cases involving family violence where a person within the family has either threatened or actually committed animal abuse or neglect, often as a way of controlling someone else in the family. And they may conduct research. What kinds of animals participate in animal-assisted um, functions. Most frequently we see dogs, cats, and horses, but pigs, alpacas, goats, rabbits, birds, guinea pigs, and rats, and mice are often used as well, uh, particularly in private psychotherapeutic practices or in group therapy. So to give you some examples of animal-assisted interventions, um, which can be used either in group therapy or in psychotherapy. Um, in the context of treating individuals, both children and adults along the autism spectrum, equine therapy, therapy using horses, 
has been found to be very effective in having producing positive effects on behavioral symptoms and social communication skills. Elderly individuals who are suffering from dementia have experienced positive effects on behavioral and psychological symptoms through the use of animal assisted psychotherapy. And in fact, um, some studies have found that the human's quality of life is actually improved. The use of animals in animal assisted psychotherapy and in group therapy has also been found to help with the reduction of de symptoms of depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and anxiety. And as an example, a recent uh, program paired veterans um, from our armed services with parrots. It had been found that parrots very frequently experience tra trauma symptoms when they have been separated from other parrots. And veterans may experience symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And by pairing the parrots with the veterans to work together, it was found that the traumatic symptoms of both the parrots and the humans uh, were reduced. Animal-related grief and bereavement services include helping owners with issues related to anticipatory grief. So for instance, an owner may see that their animal is experiencing declining health and may be grieving that, um, essentially anticipating their death and may need emotional support during that process. End of life decision-making can be absolutely critical. Many pet owners, as an example, uh, view their animals as family members and may have a great deal of difficulty deciding whether to end the animal's life through the process of euthanasia or to try to provide palliative care uh, while the animal is declining and they may need assistance making that decision. Um, and then what to do after the animal dies. Uh, do I bury my animal? Do I cremate them? Do I um, bury their remains? Do I carry them in an urn in my home? Um, and veterinary social workers can help individuals to make these decisions. We know that there are high rates of moral injury and secondary traumatic stress among veterinary personnel and shelter workers. This is particularly true of individuals who are engaged in practices related to euthanasia and who see um, animal cruelty particularly frequently, such as shelter workers. Um, veterinary social workers can offer a variety of interventions to try and reduce stress, to reduce compassion fatigue and burnout. Um, these include mindfulness training, a review of the veterinary practices practice model. So for instance, uh, do certain functions need to be um, more frequently shared? Are there individuals who are more easily able to engage in certain activities than others? Uh, conflict management is a huge component in, in this regard. Um, owners may come in with their animals and may be uh, distressed with the way they believe their animal is being treated or may be upset about the cost of a particular treatment um, and may become abusive of the veterinary staff. And veterinary social workers are trained to um, intervene and, and mediate these kinds of situations. And then there is the link between animal and human abuse and maltreatment. So we want to distinguish between animal abuse and neglect. Uh, neglect, for instance, may include not feeding an animal properly, um, not providing it with adequate medical care. There can be many reasons for what appears to be neglect. For instance, a lack of knowledge or understanding, a lack of resources. Um, abuse really involves the emotional and physical infliction of um, pain and injury. 
We do know that animal cruelty by youths is associated with their future delinquency. And research has demonstrated that um, individuals in family relationships um, that maltreat animals may do so as a way of controlling their partners and or their children. So for instance, they may threaten their partner or child um, with the abuse of an animal if that person refuses to do something or if uh, the person is believed to have done something wrongly. Um, there are many ethical issues in the context of veterinary social work. Uh, veterinary social workers are responsible for both the human client and the animal's well-being. So for instance, if I am conducting um, animal-assisted psychotherapy with a client and I see that my human client is um, being very rough with the animal or that the animal is starting to experience anxiety because of something the human is doing, um, I am responsible for the welfare of both of them in that context. There may be a conflict of interest, just as with other social workers, as an example of how this may occur. Suppose that I am a horse owner and I am receiving um, monies from another uh, psychotherapist to use my horse that has been trained for equine therapy um, in their equine therapy practice. Uh, but the horse has some behavioral issues, which puts the human clients at risk. Um, and I may not want to tell this to that other psychotherapist, because if I do, they won't use the horse, and then I will lose income. That is a conflict of interest between my ethical responsibilities as a veterinary social worker and my own self-interest in terms of my finances. Boundary crossings and violations are similar as in other aspects of social work and confidentiality. Um, mandated reporting includes the mandated reporting of the abuse of humans. That includes elderly persons, children, in some jurisdictions, um, intimate partners, but it may also include the mandated reporting of animal abuse and neglect. Uh, clients need to be aware that if I suspect that they are abusing their animals um, or neglecting them, that I may be mandated by law to report that. Um, and as a veterinary social worker, I am also responsible for knowing the procedures uh, that for that reporting. Level of competence is critical. Um, as has a, an individual received adequate training to engage in veterinary social work? Or have they simply decided that because they like animals, uh, they can become a veterinary social worker without additional training, which is not the case. There are many potential research issues. I've listed a few here. Uh, some include the evaluation of outcomes of animal-assisted interventions. So although some research has been done, there has been relatively little research comparing the outcomes of animal-assisted interventions with a usual standard of care. We don't know for which populations animal-assisted interventions may be most effective, and these are critical questions. There has been almost no research evaluating the welfare of animals in animal-assisted interventions. Um, are they more likely to become ill? Are they more likely to have a higher rate of mortality, to have longer lives, shorter lives? Um, what symptoms do they exhibit that would demonstrate stress within these contexts? Uh, we've, we have not done much research as a field in, in that regard. Although a great deal of research has been done looking at um, attitudes towards animals across different societies, across different countries, different age groups, uh, there really has not been any research looking at the acceptability of animal-assisted interventions across different societies. So we know, for instance, that in some societies it's much more common that animals be maintained outside the home and not allowed in the home. Other societies welcome animals in the home and animals are, may be treated as members of the family. Um, 
are animal assisted interventions welcome regardless of those kinds of practices or does it vary? Um, how do we proactively identify individuals who may be in need of grief support as their animals are becoming more ill? The impact of changes within animal related fields and their relation to compassion fatigue. Uh, as an example, if uh, we know that veterinary care is becoming ever increasingly specialized, increasingly costly. Um, to what extent does this relate to owners' willingness to uh, provide treatment for their animals? And does the lack of treatment or the unwillingness of owners um, increase the compassion fatigue of the veterinary workers? Does the um, establishment of more kill-free shelters uh, mitigate veterinary workers' compassion fatigue? Um, do, do changes within a veterinary practice um, help to relieve compassion fatigue? We have not done much research on the impact of programs and policies on the safety and well-being of people and animals. So for instance, if courts are more willing to issue restraining orders against family members who are threatening animal abuse, does that increase the safety of both the people and the animals? Um, if people who are abusing animals are more likely to be removed from the households um, more quickly, does that help to increase the well-being of the people and animals involved? I'd like to um, introduce you to the International Association of Veterinary Social Work. This is an interdisciplinary membership organization. It includes both individual members and organizational members, and it supports and promotes professionals that tend to the human needs that arise in the relationship between humans and animals by creating and maintaining professional standards, encouraging research, and advocating for a better world for all species. And we envision a world where professionals work together to honor and understand the impact of the human animal relationship. The organization is committed to an equitable, inclusive and transdisciplinary association uh, that represents all persons. And this is without regard to social identities um, and with the expectation that people are all treated fairly and that systemic barriers are eliminated. Uh, the organization clearly welcomes diversity and inclusiveness. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and participation in this presentation. Uh, this little being is named Weber. Uh, Weber will be 12 years old in June and he assists me with my pro bono psychotherapy practice with clients. Uh, my email is there and I would welcome you to follow up um, if you would find that helpful. Um, thank you again. Mm -hmm.